Good morning, world history students. Happy Friday. Welcome back. Today is September 2nd, 2022. I'm currently on an airplane headed to Arizona. Today we're going back to China. Your warm up today is to answer the following four questions. Number one, which dynasty ruled China from 1045 BC to 256 BC? Two, where did a Chinese emperor get his authority to rule? Number three, which dynasty took control in 221 BC? And number four, what was China's population at the end of the Zhou period? You'll read in your books, pages 42 to 44, to find the answers to these four questions. Also today, you are going to turn in your warm up to the basket when you're done. We're going to work on a small part of our China and India notes and your 2.4 guided reading on ancient China is due at 11:59 p.m. today, but I think you can get it done in class and submitted before you leave. Now that you've completed your reading, let's go through our warm up questions. Which dynasty ruled China 1045 to 256 BC? The answer is the Zhou Dynasty. While it's spelled with a Z, it's pronounced like the name Zhou. The Zhou Dynasty. Number two, where did a Chinese empire, emperor get his authority to rule? The Chinese believed in the dynastic cycle and that Dynasties rose and fell based on the mandate of heaven. An emperor who was ruling had the mandate of heaven. When an emperor was overthrown, then obviously they've lost the mandate of heaven. Number three, which dynasty took control in 221 BC? This dynasty was the Qin Dynasty. Qin, pronounced C-H-I-N, spelled with a Q, is where China gets its name today. China gets its name from the Qin Dynasty. Number four, towards the end of the Zhou period, what was China's population? China reached a population of over 50 million people by the end of the Zhou Dynasty. That concludes our warm up for today. Please make sure that your name and hour are on the warm up, that it's titled Warm Up Week 3, and that all five days of the warm up are labeled with their date. If you need Thursday's warm up, here it is. If you need Wednesday's warm up, here it is. If you need Tuesday's warm up, here it is. And if you need Monday's warm up, here it is. Each day is worth 10 points. Make sure you have all 10, all five days, and that if you have multiple pages, it's stapled together. Now let's move on to our notes. As you can see, China's geography greatly shaped its history. China had the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts to the north and west the Mongol grasslands to the north, the Pacific Ocean to the east, along with the Korean Peninsula and the Japanese islands. The Himalaya mountains and the jungles of Southeast Asia made frontiers on the south and west sides. And the two most important rivers of China are the Huanghe or the Yellow River and the Yangtze or Chang River in central China. As we've discussed, early Chinese civilization developed along the Huanghe or Yellow River. Early Chinese called themselves the Middle Kingdom because they believed that China was the center of the earth and the sole source of civilization. We will not be memorizing all the Chinese dynasties. What's more important than knowing the list of dynasties is understanding the rise and fall of these dynasties. The rise and fall of these dynasties is called the dynastic cycle, 
and it's based on the mandate of heaven. According to this theory, each dynasty rises to a political, cultural, and economic peak, and then they become corrupt. They decline, and eventually they lose the mandate of heaven, and they're replaced by a new dynasty that has the mandate of heaven. Now, the Chinese dynasties start with the mythical Shia dynasty in the prehistoric period. Then we get to the Shang, the Zhou, the Qin, the Han, the Sui, the Tang, the Song, the Yuan, the Ming, and the last Chinese dynasty was the Qing, which lasted up until 1912. Chinese history is divided into periods of time ruled by a dynasty. The dynasty is the ruling family. Over time, the dynastic cycle came to believe in the mandate of heaven, that if a ruler became corrupt, then heaven withdrew its support and the dynasty fell, replaced by a new one who obviously has the mandate of heaven because they're in charge. Ancient Chinese civilization developed astronomy, calendars, bronze working, silk making, which is pictured here. Silk is made from silkworms and the web of the worm, kind of like a spider web, is spun and woven into beautiful, soft, silky fabrics. Books and a system of writing using characters, pictured here on our bottom right, that represented words with a single character or symbol. The early Chinese dynasties of the historic period are the Shang from 1650 to 1027, the Zhou 1050 to 256, the Qin 221 to 206, and the Han 206 to 220. It was under the Qin dynasty that Shi Huangdi, the Qin emperor, unified all of China. He created a strong government and built the Great Wall of China. That is where we get to the Han dynasty. The Han also made huge advances in technology and established a trade route called the Silk Road to trade with India and the Fertile Crescent more than 4,000 miles away. For now, until the rest of our course, goods will flow east and west along the Silk Roads, trade routes that went from China to the Middle East and then on to Europe and Africa. The Silk Road was not one road or highway, rather it was many different caravan routes that stretched across the deserts and mountains of Central Asia, connecting China to the other civilizations of our River Valley civilizations. That is where we'll conclude our notes today. When we go back to our plan of the day, Your assignment that is due at 11.59 p.m. today is your 2.4 guided reading over the rise of China from pages 40 to 44. Submit that when you're done with it. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Stay out of trouble. And I'll see you all back here on Wednesday. Strength and honor.